Hello and welcome. Hello, everyone. My name is Paige Lucier Johnson, and this is Heart as a Compass Zoom interview series with a special guest, Amy Moncrief, today. And for those of you that don't know me or are new to this series, um, I started doing this series many, many years ago when I was an actress in New York City uh, in my radio days, and I was interviewing friends and artists and only to promote our shows and get to know each other. But I've realized I've always been a collector of stories. And as an actress and an artist and a storyteller myself, the one thing I love and admire is this beautiful story and humanity that we all share. And the one thing I love about educators and artists and healers is that we tend to follow our heart as a compass. We tend to go different paths that other people don't always understand. And there is this gift of following your intuitive guidance that not only do I actively seek myself, but when I can find another person who mirrors that, I immediately wanna be their friend. I immediately want to get to know them and I immediately want to know all about them. And I wanna tell a little story about my guest for today. Now, um, fast forward through many decades later, I'm in New Hampshire and I'm, working a uh, jobby job in a cubicle in a big office where everyone has their little tiny cubicles and we're answering the phones like good little ants. And I was kind of just the whole time going, I don't really understand why I'm here, but I'm here and I was owning it. And I was gonna be the best at that job. And I didn't really know anyone that was there. Everyone was really nice, but there was, you know, lines after lines after cubicles. So if you can imagine, I'm right in the front cubicle line, about four rows down. There's a couple people down there. I don't really talk to them. And then there's this sales position that opens up and there's a elite group that gets hired for it. And that's the day that I met Amy. Four rows down. I mentioned that I'd gotten the job because I kind of had my head down about sales. And Amy looks up and she goes, I got the job too. And she and I started talking that day after work to immediately realize that we were kindred spirits, that we had so much in common, that we were soul sisters. I think she was one of the reasons why I was in that job. Amy is an amazing person. She's much younger than me and she has this vibrant, wonderful goddess energy. And she and I were showing clips of each other doing light language and sneaking off to the bathrooms to get down downloads from our spirit guides and kind of talking to each other in this language that most other people just didn't understand. I'm so honored to have this beautiful, young, vibrant goddess soul on my show. With no further ado, Amy, welcome to Heart as a Compass Radio. Hello. Oh my gosh, what an introduction, Paige. You have my heart bursting. I love Hi. You. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. So Amy is, now I want to explain this too, because I struggled with it at first. Amy's younger than me. How does she know all this stuff? And I'm older and we, but we complimented each other in this beautiful way. And I think that when you're on a path of following your heart as a compass, you're going to recognize wisdom and you're going to recognize it in souls that are older than you and younger than you. And Amy and I were beautiful partners for each other at a time when we were both really kind of starting to come out of that spiritual closet and really own our goddess vibe energy. Um, this woman here um, encouraged me to publicly host my first chakra embodiment program, which is an online series that I'm now teaching and doing wonderful at. And it's because she looked at me and she goes, Paige, why do you hide all this knowledge that you have? Because she was always coming over to me and asking me questions and I had to answer it. And she'd be like, why? Why do you hide everything? And I was like, I don't know. I just, I just do. And I was telling her about my class. And she's like, girlfriend, do it. And you know what? I did. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Thank you for being that soul that nudged me along the path. And I've seen this woman she was so brave. She knew that this corporate job was not right for her. And she put her in a notice. And it was scary 
But the minute she did, I saw her light multiply 500 fold. Now she is now an entrepreneur. She's doing her spiritual soul led business 100% on her own. I'm watching her Facebook page and I am on fire with joy watching your success. <laughs> I am so proud of you and I love you so much. And I'm so happy that you are doing so many wonderful things and helping so many people. And she has a wonderful Facebook page that she does free readings and light language and light codes. She has so many amazing programs that are coming out of this beautiful soul spirit. And for those of you that don't know her, I want you to know her. So Amy, this is a hard question to ask everyone, but I really think it's important. Tell us your story. How did you become the woman I'm seeing today in front of me? Paige, holy moly, it's so much to take in, so much love just radiating from you all of the time. Thank you again for having me. Um, you know, I've thought about this question a lot because it's a very, you know, people like to ask it and I'm like, where do I even begin, right? Because it's been a fucking journey, you know, like it's been wild and it's been beautiful. It's been really fucking challenging. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in the middle of the woods um, in New Hampshire on a dead end dirt road on 30 acres in the woods. And I'm so grateful for that. I am so grateful for that. I grew up in after school, my dad would always have us play outside and I would be getting a big gallon jug of water to like come outside and make my like sticks and stew and all of that. <laughs> and um, I was very, very sensitive as a child, which now I know are, is my gift, but um, not knowing that that's a gift and not knowing how to work with it, um, I started to shut down at a very young age. Um, and it's been a journey of learning how to open back up. And one of the pieces of the journey is really not focusing without by not bypassing, but also not focusing on the things that hurt that made me who I am today, because it's really easy to slip into that victimhood mentality of um, this is why I am the way that I am and then just be complacent, complacent in that space. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that it's really super of value. I had a lot of addiction um, growing up through my early 20s. I'm turning 30 in November and I have been free of alcohol and you know hard drugs for the last three years. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, I don't think all those details are necessary, but what I can say is that if we're not given the proper tools and support, um, we will shut down. And so now I just am doing my best to live with an open heart and care for myself and set boundaries because I believe that community, like growing up in the way that I did, I was very isolated. Um, my dad was pretty strict, but so I felt isolated, right? And so I learned to just be alone um, and that being alone felt safe to me. So now it's opening back up to it's safe to connect with people and that's where boundary setting comes in and realizing what people are my people um, and that's been a huge lesson for me lately and from what I've heard from other people collectively as well um, and it's really beautiful because basically <laughs> my journey is my own as is everybody's and we go through crazy shit, but if I could say anything, it's um, just tapping into our hearts and creating that space to slow down and feel peaceful so that we know that our decisions are coming from a place where it's our energy making that decision without influence because that is how we embody our essence and how we live in flow and create this new way of community collaboration and mm -hmm. just heart-centered living. So I know that's probably no, not the typical answer, but. <laughs> I don't want the typical answers. I want Good. you. And Good. So, Thank and, you. And listen, none of us need to go into all the unpacked traumas, but I just want to highlight and congratulate you because living through addiction and coming out of it 
in an enlightened way, what you have gives you a perspective and a connection to people that I think is really important because all of us are struggling and masking our hurts in different ways. And unfortunately for a lot, especially for a lot of the younger generations coming up, there's so much isolation and drugs are so normalized, right? That it's an easy coping mechanism for people to go down. And I want to applaud you for being a spokesperson for those people, because I know you are. Like you have a story and a wisdom that I can't connect to. And the fact that you've come out of that and to speak to, you know, people through music and love and vibrancy, that's what makes you feel really alive. And when I watch your posts, not only do I feel just like proud mama, but just like kind of like jealous too. Like you've got this sensuality, this goddess vibe, like you've owned the joy in life in a way that it takes a lot of people a lifetime to do. And of course, this is not your first lifetime. You're an old soul, but you've mastered it at a much younger age. And I want to applaud you for that. And I want to also recognize not only your youth, but your wisdom and how you are helping other people find other ways to connect to their spirituality, not through drugs, right? It used to be the cool way. Like, oh, if you want to connect to spirituality, you do this and it would be a path. But you're showing us and your friends and your peers that there are other ways to do this. And that takes guts, goddess. And I love you. And I applaud you. And you have, I know that since you, I want to know a little bit about the, it's just because where I've connected with you. And I know you've done this before. You tend to shoot off your own way. You don't follow the rules. And I love that about you. So you are a perfect example of someone who uses their heart as a compass. Not what other people tell you to do because you are like, no, I'm writing my own story. You embody that. You don't just talk it, you embody it. So for those of us that are listening, how do we embody our intuitive guidance? How do we use our heart as a compass? Tell us how you've done it because you've done a great job at it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Paige. I think that it comes with a lot of fucking stumbling through life and being willing to receive support from the people who are offering it um, without any strings attached. That's been a huge lesson too, but I don't, there isn't an answer, you know, there's no key, there's no one size fits all, but what I have found to be extremely profound and shift my reality anytime I implement it is when I remember that I'm the fucking co-creator and that there is an infinite supply of energy available, beautiful, I love about you. infinite yeah. intelligence. Yeah. And there is like, Oh, this is my shit. I'm so, <laughs> this is the juicy stuff. Right. So we're co-creators. Like there is energy, right? Everything's created from energy and we have free will as beings on earth. So that's our power. We have access to everything, but our power is in the remembrance that we are the co-creators and with our free will, we get to guide and direct the energy through our life. Um, so that is like my most favorite tool to ever implement is like when we get to that point of surrender. And a lot of the time with humans, we have to like be struggling and really, um, like feel like we're giving up to make that shift. And I know I'm saying out of personal experience because I'm like, no, I'll figure this out. I'll figure this out. We're so focused in the head and the world we're coming into is bringing back into balance the spirit within the body and the mind body connection, the intelligence of that and bringing them all into balance. Cause the way I see it is the mind has just basically been working too hard. It's not a bad thing. The ego is not a bad thing. It's our individuality, but when we remember that we're the fucking co-creators and we can just be like, hey, can you just show me how it's easier than this? You know, it doesn't matter what you believe in if it's something bigger than humans, right? It can be God, source, energy, infinite intelligence, the fucking grass spirit, you know, it really doesn't matter. But 
what matters is remembering that we're powerful. So that's a huge part of my mission is reminding people that we're so powerful and we can create truly anything. And then that's when the layers start to shift and peel. We embody more light and light. Uh, life just flows better. It's when your hair time matches your outfit without even trying. And I'm all about that. <laughs> now, before I came on, um, I have to say that I usually try to tap into the field a little bit to ask if there's anything specific. And the Lemurians came in for me and saying that you had wisdom to share about the Lemurians. Um, and I know that I work with Lemurians all the time. So we have another connection there, but um, what is your connection to the Lemurians and what do they have in Heart as a Compass? Uh, the Lemurians have the most beautiful energy. So this necklace is actually a Lemurian quartz that was gifted to me by one of my soul sisters. Mm -hmm. um, synchronicities are beautiful. I'm strong for you today, my dear. That was, I think, when we first connected in those little bathroom breaks at our corporate job was I was like, holy shit, Paige, I'm channeling Lemurian light codes. And you were like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you believe me, but you're kind of like, are you like, what the fuck's going on over here? And we we're like in the bathroom. And um, <laughs> so, yeah, that was about two years ago, um, a year ago that I left a little over a year ago. Holy shit, time flies. <laughs> because the energy is moving so rapidly so Lemuria has this really beautiful peaceful energy and it's the energy of harmony and I started channeling this energy a little over a year ago um, probably early spring of 2021 and Lemuria the coding from Lemuria is that of harmony. And 2022, when you add two plus two plus two plus zero is six. Six is the number of harmony. And so around the end of last year, I started receiving that message that this is the year of harmony. And then two is about partnership. So it's about becoming a partner with harmony, with the natural flow. And the Lemurian energy desires to anchor that into us. So when I channel the light codes, it's bringing those um, Lemurian, the coding, the energetic patterns mm -hmm. into our energy field, um, if we allow it, right? Because we're the co-creators, we're free will beings. And the new energetic coding is always available to us. It's just a matter of as free will beings, are we going to slow down enough to become aware to choose differently and allow and realize that we can choose differently? So I'm totally up for doing light code too, if you'd like, but- That um, sounds good the end, but that sounds fun. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah so Lemurie is just, it's harmony. It's It was this beautiful civilization, um, not underwater like Atlantis, but very lush landscape where the community worked together everybody took care of each other and that's the new world that we're birthing that's why there's all this contrast is we are coming back to community giving and receiving and exchanging um it's exciting one thing that i also aspire to when it comes to watching you and your journey is the way that you've connected to the Lemurian sensuality, that goddess vibe that's in there. And for, for many women, including myself, sensuality and sexuality is one of these things where we've given so much of our sexual power away through different relationships and different experiences and just being told and modeled to do that, right? Um, that reclaiming it now is... It's, I mean, it's for me, it's something I'm constantly working on. I'm peeling the layers. You inspire me because you embody your sensuality in a really loving and healthy and joyous way. And I love watching you because you inspire me and other women, I think, so much of right now what's happening, it feels like there's kind of like a war on the goddess energy right now. And it feels like a lot of people are shutting that down. And I love to see people that embrace it, that encourage other people to do that. And so 
embodiment for you is a word that I've heard you say many times, which is important for me too. But you, how do you embody your power? Because I feel like it's a really beautiful gift. And I'd love to, if you can unfold a little bit of that wisdom for us. Oh, you're on, you're on mute, babe. Yes, thank you. It's um, it's a very simple answer. Mm. Our power is our focus. Mm. And so I stopped giving my focus away so freely, used that energy to start valuing myself. Then mm. I no longer was seeking all of um, the external connections as much because mm. I'm feeling truth, but sorry, there's, there's the energy right there. They're like, cause I'm feeling all the people watching too, whether it's live or, and so sometimes when there's big energy, like I'll, um, kind of lose what I'm saying because they're like, can you clear some of this? And so anybody who's watching, if you want to just say, yes, it could be in your head. It could be in the comments. I'm happy to clear some energy for you, but as free will. <laughs> um, okay. So the question was, how do I embody it? Mm -hmm. Um, it truly is that it's that I just have trusted my journey and it continues to come in layers. And I just thank you for viewing me that way and sharing that with me. I'm still a human, you know, like I still am like, am I even in my body sometimes? And it's like having grace and just being gentle with myself in that way is what has created so much liberation in my life and created that space. Mm -hmm. um, embodiment comes because my whole life, basically, I'm realizing I was completely disassociated from my body because everything was just too intense because I didn't know how to handle my intense emotions. Mm -hmm. Everything was shut down, right? Yeah. So when I stopped using drugs to fill myself up because it wasn't working anymore, mm -hmm. um, learning how to feel again has come in layers. It's like every year I, around this time, I like, I kind of go through like an integration phase over the winter. Um, I go hermit mode and then it's like my gifts up level. And so being willing to feel the things that I have stuffed down for so long of like, why do I feel different? Why does nobody love me? How come I, this, all of that shit that we, a lot of us have in some way, some have more than others. Mm -hmm. I got to a point where I was like, I'm just so tired of my life being the way that it is and continuing these patterns and then making excuses for why it is the way that it is. That's where I got to one of those surrendering points, one of those breaking points where I was like, please just show me how to shift this. And so the answer that came to that was not like, hmm. it's like, you, then you wait and you create the space for yourself to receive the answer. And my answer was slowing down and being willing to trust the shifts that were coming in. Mm -hmm. So the short answer is being willing to feel our feelings mm -hmm. so that they can like feel them. And then as you're feeling them, allow them to rise up from the lower part of our body up through my heart. Sometimes this takes a little bit, sometimes it's fast and say, thank you for healing this. Cause that's what dissolves it out of your field. If you mm -hmm. forget to do that, which I was doing for a while, my mom reminded me, it just kind of sits there. So again, coming back to being the co-creator, but the most powerful embodiment tool is being willing to feel my feelings because as that density comes up and dissolves from my field, then I become lighter, right? Then I, then everything becomes more flowing. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's the work that I have found. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's just funny. You want to remind, it just, you brought me back to when we were working together and I always have my bracelets that clear energy. So I'm sitting there like this and you're snapping and people are and like you and I would always look at each other and know exactly what we were doing in meetings where we're shifting other people's energy. And I'm like, you know, and you're snapping. And I love seeing that because we intuitively, so many of us have different ways of shifting and moving energy. Like you don't even realize it. For people that are just watching this, if you're if your psychic abilities are just starting to come on board and you're just starting to kind of awaken 
or embrace the gifts that you've always known you've had, but have pushed them down. And that's a story for just about every single healer I've met up to date has said that at one point they've rejected their abilities and shut down and then had to learn how to reopen. And so for anybody that's watching this, and I'm getting some information right now that there are people that are just stepping in. So remember that when you're mirroring and you're seeing someone's energy and you're feeling this lightness, this really engaged feeling when you're watching someone, it's because there, if there's a remembrance that's going on inside of you where you're remembering your own knowledge, right? We are a sisterhood. We are a collective. We, humanity is a brotherhood and sisterhood of light workers, And we're starting to remember. And there are different souls of all different ages that are coming in. I know that my children have taught me amazing gifts. They're nine and 11. They've come in and they've taught me some amazing things. Children that are babies right now, the golden children that are coming in are gonna be teaching us even more amazing things. So remember to recognize wisdom when you see it and feel it. So those feel, those, some of you are feeling it right now, you're connecting. That's a remembrance of your own part and your own inner wisdom. So what Amy just did was walk us through pulling that energy out and feeling it through our heart chakra because once we release it from the heart chakra, that's where unconditional love comes from. That's the freeing part, right? That's, and it's so beautiful that you mentioned that. Now, any age can do this. Doesn't matter whether you're 13 or whether you're 103. Once you start allowing yourself to feel these feelings again, it can be rocky, but it's also beautiful. And I, know, and I wanna talk a little bit about that rockiness Amy, because I know that I've struggled with it and I know you have too. So what is your advice for someone that is struggling with their feelings right now and is feeling a lot? And P.S. with the Schumann resonance and astrology, we're all feeling a lot right now. And for those of you that are feeling a lot right now, it's okay and you're not alone. And there are ways to feel these feelings in a gentle and loving way. Amy, share some of your tips. I want to start by saying that sometimes I'm feeling really good today and I'm so grateful for that, but holy fuck, I am so glad you brought up the Schumann resonance too, because you, your posts about that are what helped me remember that I am not crazy. Like this is real. And that what we are feeling individually, we're most of us are all feeling on some level, right? Like we're all part of the collective. Like we're just these little drops. Mm -hmm. Um, so I also just want to say at the beginning of my like real journey in 2016, like I moved to the mountains and I was hiking all the time. And that was when I really was able to start tapping into my gifts. That mm. being said, I started to have a Kundalini awakening and I felt that shit crazy. Like I felt like I was crawling out of my skin. I, at that point in my life, I did not know anybody that I could go to with this kind of thing. I was just like, mm -hmm. I feel like it felt like I was actually being rebirthed. Like my, and I noticed that happened again this winter. Um, and so if you're feeling extremely uncomfortable, like sensations in your body, like you can start to develop a relationship with your guides, whatever it is, the infinite intelligence, the infinite energy, you can call it whatever the fuck you want, but just realize that with your brain and your being, your essence, you can just be like, hey, this is really intense. Can you please back it off? You have oh, that. That was a big lesson for me. I was, you know, waking up at four o'clock in the morning to channel and do all this work and finally was like, can I just sleep? They were like, oh yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Boundaries, right? Again, we have the theme of boundaries and like the same old shit, like go outside and like sit under a fucking tree. You know, it's like nature mm. heals us. Um, in my experience, of course, this is all just my experience. My, I also want to say like, do what works for you. And if like, you're like, oh, this bitch told me to go sit under a tree. So I got to go for a fucking hike. And then you're in a pissed off mood because some bitch told you to go for a hike. Like, let your heart be your compass. Like, where is your peace? These are the things that work for me. Mm -hmm. And I am so fucking over the spiritual community. Like 
handing out this box of this is what you're supposed to do to go through Me awakening too. like Me too. over it like Ooh. do what the fuck you want to do like be a good person and like fucking chill hard and be a creator like yep. the yes. other really profound shift for me recently is being in a space physically emotionally and mentally where I feel safe because mm. I'm also realizing that my entire life I've been in fight or flight and for me it's a lot of freeze as well like I don't fight I freeze or I run away to be alone like that's what feels safe to me and so being willing to create the shifts in my life while asking for guidance, how can I shift this? Um, and prioritizing my peace and my feeling of being safe. Because when we're in fight or flight, we're in survival mode, right? And so only when we are safe and we feel cared for and nurtured, can we actually truly embody our creative nature. Because if we're focused on survival, that's our main focus. Mm -hmm. Creating a space intentionally and making sure that we feel safe, love, nourished, that includes the foundations within our life, like budgeting, routines, these things that are the foundation so that we can flourish within are so important. And so I just became willing to make whatever decisions I had to with and create boundaries so that I feel safe and peaceful no matter what, so that I can be tapped into my my essence, my pure essence and be the creator because we're all creative beings, so. And I just wanna highlight something you mentioned, which is it's gonna feel good. When you're, when you're following your heart, it's gonna feel lighter. It's gonna feel brighter. It's gonna feel happier. If it feels darker, if it feels heavier, if it hurts, it's not supposed to, right? Give yourself the freedom to follow what makes you feel lighter and brighter and happier. As long as those are good choices for yourself, right? Like sometimes we make excuses, right? And we do things that aren't always of our best interest because we can make excuses for it. But what Amy's talking about is having the ownership of your own thoughts and ideas and feelings to do what is right for you. And that's hard and it's beautiful. And it's like, uh, like what I call it, like the cookie crumbles of the universe, right, Amy? Like you, you, I've seen you do this so many times. Like you mentioned going into the mountains and, you know, just knowing you with you, with your, you know, leaving work. We all wanted to leave, but Amy did. It. <laughs> and it was scary for you, but I've watched you unfold in these beautiful ways where you're working as an entrepreneur and you're traveling and, you're doing a lot with music and just allowing yourself to find the yeses, the things that make you lighter and brighter and happier. And I, I love that. I think that's one reason why in all of your pictures, you just exude sensuality and goddess energy, because when someone is really tapped into the flow of life, it's beautiful. It's not, it's not work. It's not hard. And I get glimmers of it. And when I do, it's like, ah. And so it's just a really beautiful feeling to kind of know yourself and um, to acknowledge where you've been, right? To acknowledge where you've come from and the story that you've had. Now, one thing that you, I love about you is you say alchemy, you said you, you alchemy, sensuality, and you play with magic. So I know that you kind of stepped out as an entrepreneur now. You're not working a corporate job. You're really focusing on your soul-led business. So tell us a little bit about stepping into your entrepreneurship and your soul-led business and how you were able to follow your own intuitive guidance to do that, because I know it wasn't easy for you. <laughs> I think that that journey is like, it's humbling, you know, it's very humbling. Um, there were a lot of times where I swore this is the last job I'm getting, like I can do it. And one of the huge um, areas of growth for me is learning how to manage my time. I'm so much better at it, but it's been five or six years of being like, 
I'm going to be a full-time entrepreneur. Like I thought I was going to have it right off the bat with the network marketing. And it was like, I learned a lot. And part of that journey was learning to trust myself um, and my decisions and our, like you were saying, like when we're following our essence, we're going to feel lit up. And like, there were things I was ignoring about where I didn't feel lit up. So like Mm -hmm. that has been learning that trust for myself where it's like, this sounds good and it looks good because somebody else is happy. And like, let me just latch onto that because they're happy. So maybe I'll be happy. And like, then coming back from that situation, maybe it's a few years long. You're like trying to force this thing into your life because you think it sounds good and looks good. And it's like, that's the humbling part of the journey, right? Is like, Mm -hmm. maybe this thing really isn't for me just because it works really well for this other person. I really love. And they're really happy. Like that is like, that was mind blowing. Cause I was like, well, if they're happy, why can't I be happy? Um, so it's been a lot of learning to manage my time and being willing to receive help, um, being willing to ask for help, being willing to be, treat myself like a baby. Like I really, that has been a huge shift for me is like the whole time, like in the beginning of my business, I was like, yeah, I got this. I got this. And I really wasn't allowing myself to deeply, um, like sink in and absorb what I was learning. Cause I was trying to like shove it all in. They're like two totally different energies. You know, it's like, oh, let me like be in this space and absorb and like learn. And like, I have to do this thing, right. I was in fight or flight. I was in survival mode. I was like, I have to do this thing so that my life can be different. So this, 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 this. So now I'm in this new energy of prioritizing my peace and mm-hmm. want my what? wellness. What? Say it again. Prioritizing my peace, Ooh. my wellness. and connecting in with my body and my senses because Mm -hmm. the doorway to the quantum field of infinite possibilities is presence how are we present through our senses so the more that we're on our phone the more that we're doing these things right I noticed it the other day I was eating something while I was on my phone and I wasn't truly tasting what I was eating and so I was desensitized from my experience so we can talk about the program, but I, I'm creating a program. And so it's all about <laughs> the new, <laughs> it's all about, um, there is one section in particular that's about presence and the senses. And I'm mm-hmm. channeling light codes, light energetic coding that sinks into our subconscious field. There's nothing that we have to do. And then we start to shift from there. When our energy shifts, we start to shift. Um, And so coming back to connection with our senses, right? Our touch, our taste, our smell, our hearing, our sight. Mm -hmm. And there's an activation for the sixth sense as well. Because if you're watching this right now, I can say, right, this is my intention right now. If you're watching this right now, then you have a sixth sense. So let's fucking activate it, right? That's my intention. So that will be the reality. It's that playful, you know, even if you don't know what it is yet. Um, what is the name of your program? What? What is the name of your program? It's called the essence embodiment portal. It's all about the remembrance of your light and how easy, fun, playful, exciting, and sensual life gets to be. It's our natural state of being. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love, I love that you're doing this. I love that you're creating. Um, one thing I want to talk a little bit about that you've mentioned a few times, which I find I struggle with. I'm a 42 year old woman. I'm struggling with it. I'm getting better every day, but boundaries. And I, I am working actively right now on creating boundaries and uh, setting those up. But if I'm struggling, other people out there are too. So Amy, what's your wisdom on that? Well, I'm going to keep it real, like always. And what has worked for me is I just had to get sick enough of the shit that I was allowing to do something differently. Mm -hmm. I just, I had a few experiences over the last few months and the last few years, but especially the last few months that really taught me boundaries. Um, and now I just feel so liberated. Like, it's Mm -hmm. like, oh, like I can do that for myself. Like, especially if we've grown up people pleasing, catering to others. And that was ingrained in us from a young age. It's like, it's never occurred to us to put ourselves first. So that was the shift for me recently was Mm -hmm. I decided 
And I started asking myself, like, what does today look like if I'm putting myself first? If I'm not catering to this person or that person because I love them, because that's actually enabling a paradigm that's not truly serving you. So when you decide to set boundaries, if it may feel painful or something, or someone's upset, the power in that is, is other people's responses and emotions are not our responsibility. And that doesn't mean go through the world like a wrecking ball, but that means for me that I have the freedom to make decisions that are best for me. And I believe we fortunately get to have that freedom here to make our own decisions. Um, So yeah, again, it's like, there's not really a sugar-coated answer for that. It's like, if you want to experience something differently, you have to be willing to change it. And for me personally, I wasn't willing for a long time. So I sat in my shit and I sat in my patterns and it's like, again, it comes in layers, right? It's like you shift some things and it's like, well, what's not working? Reevaluate. What are these patterns? What do I actually desire? Is this an alignment with that? And then pivot, release what doesn't work. I'm seeing that in the collective and with my clients as well, is that especially right now with all the energy that's going on, things that we think that we've cleared are coming back in and we're going, Oh, I need to go a little deeper now. I need to go. And, and so if you're having things that are coming up for you, like for me, boundaries, where you're like, man, I thought I worked on that. And they're coming up for you. It means that you're clearing on a new level. Like you just mentioned that looping was happening, right? We're still, there are still places in that where we can go deeper. And that's the beauty of healing is that it is really this journey and it's constant layers. It's not like someone is like, Hey, I'm all better and I'm perfect now. So now I can help other people. And I'm mentioning this right now because that was a blocker for me a long time for a long time running my own soul led business was that, Oh, I I don't deserve to help other people because I'm still working on myself. Like I was striving for this perfection for my soul before I could go out and help other people, which helped me a lot in my spiritual journey. I've learned a lot. I have a lot of wisdom to share, but I was holding my own self back and helping other people because I wasn't perfect yet. And Amy is one of the people who reminded me like, you have wisdom to share. Like, why aren't you doing this? Because she like, she was one of those instigators, those innovators in my life right at the time when I was going to loop again and I was going to go right back into that cycle of, I still need to learn more and I just need to go deeper and I'm not good enough yet. And Amy was like, no, no, you do know all this and you should just get out there. And so thank you for that. Anybody that's listening right now, know that when you find, when you have wisdom, even if your life isn't perfect, share your wisdom. Don't stop yourself, right? We all have these stories We all have this wisdom. And if we start looking at as a collective wisdom that we're working together, we're healing together. When I heal for myself, I know I'm healing for the collective as well, right? When you, if you vibrate with Amy or me or someone as a teacher, that means that there's wisdom for you to learn from that person. And yes, learn it and do it but also know that that's your own remembering of your own wisdom. So it's a mirroring, right? It's, it's, it's not like a servant master thing anymore. That used to be the old mm-hmm. paradigm, but the paradigm now I'm sensing is more of this sisterhood embodiment. And, and I say sisterhood, not that men are not involved, simply that it's more of a collaboration um, and so it's this, this brotherhood, this sisterhood, this collective of healing and a circular journey where we're all helping each other. Amy, I know, has a wonderful Facebook group. She does wonderful channeled messages. She does free tarot readings. She does free readings. So definitely, if you're not on there, she's the light fairy on Facebook. Get on there. Links will all be in this page. You can join her Facebook community. She also does one-on-one sessions where she can activate. Um, I know that she and I have been speaking light co- loads and light language for a long time now. Um, and I'm sure that you've like magnified so much in the last two years. Two years ago, you were super powerful. I'm so excited to see how you're evolving and coming. This new program, I'm thrilled about for you. I'm thrilled about for you because 
you've been thinking about this for a long time. I remember being at your house and you had little notepads and you were thinking about it. So the fact that you had an idea, and it's not that the ideas are always going to happen overnight, but I've seen Amy go from thinking about maybe wanting to step out and show other people her light language videos secretly in a private room where nobody else can see like Paige, can you see my light? Is this light language? I'm like, yeah, that's light language. And then going from that to like, uh, now she's talking about it in the office and now like she's owning it. And then, oh, now she's got a, a, a logo and oh, now she's quitting her job. And, oh, now she's taking one-on-one -on -one clients and now she's got a program. This is a beautiful journey of someone who has embodied their healing journey and has stepped out into their light. And so just take a second and applaud her and mirror that in yourself as well, because it's possible for all of us. Now, one thing that Amy mentioned earlier is that she said, I have light codes to share. And I was like, whoa, 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 let's hold that up a little bit because I, I wanted <laughs> to talk a little bit more, but I feel like we've got about 15 minutes left. Um, so I want everybody to go and join Amy. I want everybody to sign up on her Facebook page. I want as many of you that feel the yes inside your soul to take her course. But if Amy, if you would like to do some light codes right now, we would be honored to have you on our show and do that. That would be a lovely gift. Sounds like fun to me. I'm just feeling into the codes coming through and they don't always, um, you know, have like a title and like, that's just our humanity, right? Mm -hmm. But there is an energy of wanting to bring this harmony of the Lemurians are wanting to bring to us this harmony into our field. Um, so if you're open to receiving a clearing for your highest good and activation of your light, the remembrance of it, um, you can go ahead and type yes in the comments or just say yes, it can be in your head. Um, it doesn't doesn't matter as long as the intention is there. But yeah, there's definitely some energy coming through. So give me a second. Let me hold space for you. Thank you. Turashiton Darasi Katareki Tarasi Shokan Darasie Turakasha Turashi Pondaraki Tirasha Toraki Toro Shotoraki Tere Sondara. They're saying it's safe to be sensual. Remember who you are amongst the other energetic encoding. <laughs> They're saying it's safe to be sensual. It's safe to be different than you've ever been before and to embody your essence. The codes are very powerful. So they're saying deep breaths all the way into the lower part of your body and integrating in the silence in resting and receiving in between, um, allowing the flow to integrate through our field. As it creates a new reality of ease and pleasure and a foundation of creativity. There are Kundalini awakenings for those who wish to receive them. This is a very intense clearing and the collective guides are saying that we are here for you. And if you wish to shift, we will help you. There are so many people who are desiring to assist you with this shift, you who is receiving this message right now. But I keep them that I just wanna smooth out the field a little. These codes are very powerful. So just because they're a couple of minutes long, mm -hmm. And they're just saying we're creating a new world and your only job is to be who you are. Mm. Feel it all. Allow the density up through your system and thank it for healing, for clearing, anchoring the new earth frequency into our heart and through our entire system. Yeah. Safety and body.
Kutarashitandara Sarakita. You are art. <laughs> And they just say thank you, thank you for receiving, because again, the energetic coding is always available, and like mm. we get to choose to create the space and be the channel or to receive it. So beautiful. I felt that sacral, and it was very sacral and crown, so I could feel the 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 energy rising. That was so beautiful, and intense, and lovely. And I love the fact that it was that it's safe to be sensual because that really is such a beautiful message for everyone right now to embrace our feelings, our creativity. Sensuality isn't always just sex. It's also creation. It's creativity. It's feelings. It's all of these beautiful emotions that are often overshadowed and undervalued by many, many people. And when we stop sexualizing everything and instead sensualizing our life, it makes a big shift in how we flirt with the universe. Yes. Yes. All about flirting with the universe. Living in that playful flow is a game changer. I highly recommend it. Yes. Now, one of the questions is that I wanted to ask you, especially for the people that are tuning in, and I can feel a lot of people are watching this today. I can feel the energy. That's really exciting. Um, either here or in the replay. We are all stepping out. We are all, I love the advice. We don't have to do anything. We just have to be ourselves because so much of that spiritual box right now is trying to tell us to fall into these rules. I love that there's no rules to simply be yourself is the beautiful aspect right now. What else can we do to raise the vibration of humanity as we are stepping out as a collective, a sisterhood, a brotherhood of healing and raising the frequency? not only in ourselves, but in the world. What's your advice on how to do that? Being willing to be vulnerable. Being willing to open up and show who you actually are, you know, mm -hmm. and allowing ourselves to the space and the grace to shift. I can be, have a different perspective than I did 10 minutes ago and giving mm. myself that grace, that grace and that space to shift. And this journey with boundaries and giving myself this space to the, allowing myself to love myself better has allowed me to connect deeper with other people. Um, so, the thing is, is we're human beings, right? Like we're not human doings and humans are obsessed with the idea of what can I do to create? And we're moving into a new paradigm of allowing our beingness to be enough, our essence. Like I know I say this over and over again, but when we're tapped into the energy of truth, that's when the aligned actions become natural because obviously we have physical bodies for a reason it's to create with them but mm. it's not from the place of all over the place it's who the fuck am i and what does that life look like mm. so creating space and peacefulness for ourselves and being willing to be open and vulnerable and hearing people, um, having conversations, being willing to look at where we've been wrong, you know, or maybe hurt somebody else, take in all of that, but don't sit in it and be willing to grow from conversations and then let go. Mm. And, also, go. Mm. and also what you said, which really resonated with me, I've recently done a soul retrieval treating yourself like a baby, loving yourself in your infinite infant wisdom, right? Allowing yourself to really look at yourself with that unconditional love 
when you hold a baby in your arms, even if it's not yours, there's a marvel at it. Like, wow, look at this soul. It's so little and beautiful. And doing that when you look in the mirror, loving yourself in that same wonder of I'm here. Isn't it amazing that Amy is here? Isn't it amazing that I am here in this world, in this universe? It is a miracle that we're all here. It is a joy. And if you can love yourself enough to recognize the beauty that's in your own eyes, I think that's a beautiful way to start loving yourself. Now, I just want to take a moment and say, I love you so much, Amy. And I am so thrilled that I took that job and I was in that cubicle and that I was able to meet you. Um, you are a dear friend of mine. You are a soul sister. I truly, truly love you. I hope that everyone that is watching and listening will reach out to Amy. She's a wonderful and vibrant soul. Again, she's known as the Light Fairy on Facebook. She has her own private page. We'll put links on there as well. You can, now is your class uh, limited by dates or is it, they can do it anytime they want? Anytime. Um, and there's, Paige, do you mind if I say something else? Something Please. came through while you were just talking is, you know, when you're talking about loving yourself and looking in the mirror and that's something that I just, I'm so grateful that I can do that now, but it was very clear message to come through that if you're not feeling like that and it's not possible for you right now to feel like that, that is okay too. And that is part of your journey. And that's where the vulnerability comes in of being willing to reach out to somebody who can help you nourish yourself. So that was very important needed to be said. So I just wanted to add that on there. No, um, thank you for trusting your heart yeah. and saying that. That's, and that is just a little example of listening to your heart as a compass, right? She, you had a message come through and instead of stuffing it down, it, these messages are there. There's, it's resonating. So thank you for showing that in real time about how easy it is to just interject and stop and add to it. Something of value. We don't know where, but the message is coming for a reason. And that is just a little example of what it means to listen to your heart. I love that. I love that. Thank you for doing that. That's a beautiful gift in itself. Thank you for receiving. Thank you for having me and for creating this beautiful portal of energy. I just am sealing this with goosebumps all down my spine, which is always a good sign, good confirmation of truth for me personally. Absolutely. Well, I'm so honored to have had you on the show. For those of you that are watching, like, subscribe. I try to do a show uh, weekly is my goal right now. Next week, I have a beautiful woman from South Africa who does traveling um, and soul-led retreats. And I met her in a collective of uh, healers from around the world. Her name is Larissa Riley and she's fantastic. I invite you all to come in. I just recently did um, a fire rite ritual with her, uh, the, moon the moon K fire rites, which was beautiful for the solstice. And there's so much powerful energy that's coming down through this earth and through this time right now. Um, so share your story, find like-minded souls. You're not alone. You are loved, you are supported, and you are guided. Thank you to everyone who came to watch this show. I invite you to watch past interviews and to keep watching them in the future. It has been my honor to be in this collective space with Amy Moncrief today. Thank you all, and may you all use your heart as a compass. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day. Thanks, Paige.